We're gonna be moving from here to our cache site. We're gonna secure the contents of the cache. We're gonna make our way back down here. And so the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and plot our location on and then get off the X. So what you do is you take credit card, cat card, whatever, and just maybe the best MRE in this box, probably one of the better MREs that I've ever had. <laughs> So now that we're backed up off in a little cubby, go ahead and get this thing going. A little, a little couple things that you're gonna see throughout the duration of this video, right? So we're gonna be moving from here uh, out to an objective rally point and to our cache site. We're gonna secure the contents of the cache. We're gonna make our way back down here. And so I'm gonna show you and we're gonna walk through how I actually planned a route to get from here to there and then from there back, uh, from the objective back. And a couple of little little tips and tricks along the way. And right, and so now that we're here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and break out a map. I'm going to show you where we're at. I'm going to show you where we're going to go to find our cache site and why I'm going to take some of the considerations I am along the way. And again, you know, a, a thousand what ifs. And, and if we're going to run down the rabbit trail, happy to do so. But what would be even better is if you have a particular scenario in mind, then drop that in the comments and then maybe we can work up some sort of a, a video explanation or discussion or whatever the case is about it. So let's go ahead and take it to the map. Right, so the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and plot our location. So I know that we are at 3874-0827 uh, and we're gonna go, our actual objective is gonna be 39350731. Seven, so we're gonna be right in here, we're gonna double check. 3874-0827. All right, so that's pretty close. And we're gonna to go to 3935. 39350731. Now I can see uh, moving out through here that I have mostly, according to the map, mostly uh, some wooded area. And in a straight line, you know, it's going to be close to uh, maybe, so it's 1,000, 1,100 meters or so. So a couple things on that, right? You, I'm not going to move in a straight line on a bearing, trying to keep in a bearing through some of this stuff. As you can see, it's, it's pretty thick all through here uh, for the most part, uh, which is, is good in some ways if I want to... Um, use it for concealment, right? But it's gonna be really noisy. Uh, unless it was raining, something else is gonna conceal my, my noise. I gotta be concerned about my noise this morning. So we know where we're at and we know where we're gonna go. And I wanna make sure a couple considerations that how I get from A to B is not how I get from B back to A. So as I'm looking at my map here, uh, I think what we're going to do, we know that we have to cross a couple roads. And again, you know, depending on how permissive or, or not the environment is, it's going to dictate quite a bit. Uh, and uh, again, a thousand what ifs in this, but point being, I think we're going to cut down uh, almost in a generally straight southerly line. And then we'll just kind of dog leg into our objective, right? Does that make sense? So I know that we're gonna cross you know, an open area here and I'll accept the risk on that for this particular one. Um, you know, some other considerations, you know, you may wanna move out at night, uh, but you wanna make sure that you understand what your light data is. Uh, best time for movement at night is gonna be, you know, when you just have like a crescent moon, but that obviously degrades your own vision as well, but you can use that to your advantage. <coughs> so we're gonna move off uh, generally in a Southern line until we get to 
uh, this particular area where we have um, these roads junction in here, right? So we can see uh, this road coming off of, and it, it's, it's not a paid road, it, it's a trail, uh, but it's pretty well usable. And I should be able to easily see this feature here. So all I need to do is basically move in a generally south southerly direction. I don't, I'm not going to be worried about my pace count per se, uh, because I'm going to be able to find this uh, when I get there. And then after I get to this area, I'm going to move to this, to this junction, to this Y. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut uh, southeast and we'll, we'll plot this out from that point to the road system. Uh, this is Vietnam Village Road, and then we're going to cut over into it. So what we're going to do here is plot, is get our uh, bearings here to go. Actually, I think as we're looking at this, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, so we're going to move from that triangle to the road. I'm actually going to plot to right there on the road system. That's why we want to use a pencil. So it's going to be 142 degrees. And a distance is going to be right at 500 meters. And then from that road, I'm going to cut 90 degrees in 150 meters. So from Vietnam Village Road, and then from Vietnam Village Road, to my objective is going to be 90 degrees grid. And what do we say? It's just a general reference, you know, moving south. Uh, I know that we're going to move, generally speaking, uh, it's going to be about 600 meters due south. Uh, so 600 meters is half of a kilometer a kilometer is almost half a mile um so we're going to be moving almost a quarter of a mile so i know that i should if i move if i walk more than you know five minutes um i've probably gone too far if i've only walked a, a couple minutes i haven't gone quite far enough so there, there's a couple ways to to help stay on track the only other equipment that we're using is a map I got a pen and uh, or pencil. This is my lime green pencil. You may remember that one. I got a notebook and a protractor, and that's pretty much all that we're going to use. So before I get to that road, I'm going to use that basically as an objective rally point. And but I think uh, we have enough what we have to get from here, right? So I think we have enough to get us from where we're at to where we're going. Now moving back, I think we're going to use a different route, and so. This route, so coming in, we're kind of moving in in a clockwise fashion or counterclockwise fashion. So I think we're going to keep that up. And so from our objective, we're going to keep that counterclockwise motion by moving out to, I think, this area here. And then what we'll do is we'll hug the tree line and come in this direction and then move our way back up the, here, if that makes sense. So from... Our objective, we're going to move um, roughly 50 degrees from objective to, we'll call this point uh, Charlie, is, what did we say, 50 degrees? Better to measure twice, 50 degrees, and that's grid from there uh, again we're just going to follow this road system and that's going to be uh, to get from here to there is going to be uh, call it 450 ish meters right and we're going to follow the road system uh, back up to where it hits Vietnam Village Road and then from that intersection, what we're going to do is we're going to cut uh, through the little woods area, back through the open area, and then back to the truck. So that should end up being 320 degrees. Grid, and this is from 
Charlie to, we'll call it, uh, what do we want to call this one? To, from Charlie to Delta is, and see, that's why we pay attention to what we're doing here. From Charlie to Delta, we're following the road. From Delta to Echo, 320 degrees, right? And then that's going to be seven hundred fifty meters. Now, from here, I'm just going to do some uh, quick calculation by looking at my declination diagram at the bottom of my map. And I know that, uh, according to my declination diagram, what I need to do is uh, for to convert a to convert a grid to a magnetic. We're going to subtract the GM angle. My GM angle is 15 degrees. I have all of my magnetic azimuths that I need to move when I'm using my compass. And I think we're uh, ready to about step it out. All right, so we've done all of our math and all of our calculations. So we're right here at our starting point. What we're going to do is we're going to move south to this intersection. From this intersection, we're going to cut to the southeast to the road. From the road, we're going to move to our objective. From our objective, we're going to move in a northeasterly direction to the, towards this intersection. And we're going to handrail this road until we get back to the Vietnam Village Road. And then from here, we're going to cut off to the northwest until we reach our objective. So we're just moving in a counterclockwise. Big points and takeaways here is that the way that we're moving is not the way that we're coming back, right? So we're going to move uh, in a counterclockwise direction coming into our objective. And we're going to move in a counterclockwise direction, moving back out to our objective. So we know that we're here at our starting point. We know that we're going to go to our objective, which is location Benavides. And then we're going to move down uh, from where we're at to the triangle. And then from the triangle to Vietnam Village Road is 142 degrees grid or 127 degrees magnetic. It's 500 meters from the road to our objective. 90 degrees or 75 uh, magnetic and it's only going to be 150 meters and then from our objective uh, to Charlie we're going to move out at 35 degrees magnetic for 450 meters and then from Charlie to Delta we're going to again just handrail that road from Delta to Echo uh, which is back to where we're at is going to be 320 degrees or 305 magnetic and for 750 meters. All right so from here we'll go ahead and get our gear on and Step it on out. Right, and again, depending on the type of uh, environment that you're operating in, it may dictate, you know, how you take notes. And again, a thousand, a thousand scenarios, my friends. Important thing, I think, is you understand some basic principles and fundamentals and uh, know how to work through them, you know. Keep everything secured. And just rock with yourself. Come on. All right, so here we go. We got the truck hidden back uh, probably close to 150 meters off the road. And it's kind of around in a bend, so you can't really notice it at all. Right? If I needed to, you know, I could raise the hood to help reduce some glare. But I'm not concerned about that right now. I'm just going to move out to this intersection. And then we're going to be crossing an open danger area, which is not advisable. So after we get out here, we know that we need to move south until we make it to that triangle. So I'm going to pause here and we'll just look at everything we have. Nice big open danger area. And double check our compass just to maintain our bearings. South is straight in front of us. 
we can kind of follow this road for a little bit. been uh, a lot of logging I can see uh, going on out in front of me. These piles, all the branches. Now that being said, what is shaded in green out in front of us is now there's no vegetation. So that would normally be shaded in white on the map but it's going to be in green and so we're going to pause up here in just a second we're going to reorient ourselves look at the map and then step out because i know that this area this tree line right here i'm confident is the tree line uh, for that green shaded area. getting pretty close we passed Vietnam Village Road about 150 ish meters as you can tell it's pretty thick back here and so you know when you're thick in vegetation it's going to change your pace count it's going to change your direction and when you're looking for a small point that you've never been to before such as maybe you're doing a land navigation or something you know, you need to be really precise. And, and that's why, uh, one of the reasons why I, I shrunk this down to the shortest gap possible, right? You don't want to keep a bearing or an azimuth for, you know, hundreds and hundreds or a thousand or more meters because your, your, your variance is going to be off the further that you go away from your start point. It's just that it's going to happen. So when you're looking for a fine distance or a fine location, I'm talking about small granular, right? An eight digit or a 10 digit. Um, you want to move the shortest distance possible. And so I know that we're, we're getting pretty close, probably within 30 meters and we'll start looking around and, uh, and we'll see what we can find. All right. So Ray's been on point. He thinks we're, thinks we're getting pretty close. We'll keep a lookout. You know, and that's all we're going to do is we're just basically doing five twenty fives. you know, never forgetting that something could have been behind you. Since I know we're close, you know, I want to make sure that I conduct sills, which is to stop, to look, to listen, and to smell at every stop point along the way. So I know that we're close, and because we are, we're going to, again, conduct some more sills. And it's something that you conduct every time you stop, whether it's intentional uh, at a checkpoint or your objective rally point, or maybe it's uh, because you, you, heard, you did hear something. So sills, again, is just some actions at the halt, just to stop, to look, to listen, and to smell. What kind of things do you hear? Anything that's man-made? Sharp pinging sounds, animals?
hear, I hear something. Airplane, but some banging noise, like maybe some loggers doing some work out, so. I think we're pretty secure. So let's, uh, let's move out and find this thing. Oh, I see it. I don't know if you can see it. So here's our point. It should be Benavides. We should have a cache. Yeah, we do. So there's, there's Benavides. And then here's our chow. There's our cache. Right, so we're gonna carry this the whole way. Mainly because it has a handhold, and as hungry as I am, it's, it's just gonna be easier to carry this way. I don't wanna leave cardboard or the, the wrapping or anything else out here that could be found. And so I could stuff it, uh, most of them in my pack, but then I'd be carrying the cardboard, and it's gonna be the same weight regardless. So we'll figure this out. I'm gonna come up here a little ways, getting off the X, right? It's important to get on and then get off the X. Right, so what we're gonna do is, I mean, obviously you can hear somebody out there shooting. Different environment that would cause for, uh, you know, some different TTPs to be falling into play, but I don't think anybody's looking for me right now. So what we're gonna do is we're going to look at our notes, right? And we know that from our X to uh, Point Charlie was 50 or 35 degrees magnetic, 450 meters. And that should take us to that intersection. So as we look out here, let's find 35 degrees. Should be somewhere in this general area, I think. I was off a little bit. Uh, 35 is... right through the tree of course it is so we're going to preset our compass now make us good to go 450 meters is quite quite to go to but we'll, we'll figure this out again big thing and what we're doing here is we're getting off the X and moving in a general direction. Um, I'm trying to find that man-made feature, right? I'm trying to get to a spot where we can work from. Too many times I think we get it sideways and twisted that we have to work from, from point to point specifically, right? Move from starting point to point alpha and that's just not always the case, so. Pick it up and move it out. Close. I see an opening spot here. We come up close to the road. In fact, I see a trail system here. But I know that this trail system, get a little bit closer, cannot be the one that we're looking for. Man, and I'm right here at this intersection, right? I see this trail right there. But, you know, as we look down on the map and how i know that this is not the trail that we're looking for is that we should be on, on the outside edge or boundary of these trees right so you know obviously tree line right here but you know that that's these trees right here are 
are green space and so a cartographer is going to show all of these trees because it's as populated as it is it's going to be shaded in green on the map and so when i look at the map my intuition says that we're actually right here is this little bend in the road and that there's a trail system that got put in after this map was made and it just hasn't hasn't made it there we need to keep moving, not much further, uh, and we'll be at the edge of the tree line and we can start hugging that road. Right, and here we go, you know, case in point. Uh, obviously, the spoils of man, cheese it's The box been here for a minute, you know, it's all dyes washed out of it, except for the blue. Been pillaged by the ants, I'm sure. Uh, that's why you gotta be careful, man. You don't wanna leave signs of your presence. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, it, it, for this iteration, for this leg of our patrol, we are hand railing the road, okay? So we're hand railing the road. So what does that mean? That means I'm walking alongside of the road, but I'm not quite on the road right I, I if there was some traffic happening i could work off the road pretty quickly and efficiently uh i, I mean I, I could work to a, a concealed position pretty efficiently and work our way around Right, so from this point to the next intersection, we're using what's called a handrail. So what is a, what is a handrail? A handrail is when you're walking parallel with a known linear feature. In this case, it's a road, right? So I know that the road uh, let me set this down. I know that the road is off here. And if I walk along it to the south of the road and I don't cross the road, it's going to keep me moving in the same direction. It, it's kind of in eyesight. And if there was a, a traffic on the road, I could see it from here. Right. So what that's going to do, let me pick this box back up and switch hands. What that's going to do. Again, is it's going to keep me moving uh, in the right direction. Does that make sense? Like, I know that I'm moving generally west because I'm paralleling the road. So why do I want to do it? Well, I want to do it because of reasons of security, right? Because there may or may not be some sort of activity in the area that I need to have a reasonable amount of chance to hide from, right? At the same time, it's quicker than moving straight through the bush, right? Quicker than moving straight through the bush. So I use a handrail to move quickly, stay on the azimuth that I wanna to get to, and not have to worry about uh, some of the hazards of working through 
the thicker bush. You know, those hazards are going to include going off course, moving too far, not moving far enough. By utilizing this handrail, I can uh, stay moving in the right direction. And if need be, I'm far enough away that I can stop and find a good concealed position, right? Does that make sense? Because I'm far enough away from the road where if I'm not moving, somebody in a road is not, not going to see me. I have a good reasonable chance that they're not going to see me. We're getting close now. I think Riggs can smell the water. <laughs> Just right in front of us. Picked up a game trail. We're on the north side of the road that we're parked uh, parallel with. So coming in a different direction again, you know, coming back in counterclockwise to the truck as opposed to when we left, you know, we left clockwise. I don't know what you're into, but should be getting hot. Here it is. All right. I know I'm thirsty. And I know Riggs is thirsty as well. Ugh, thirsty too. Try to finish your water. Again, you know, you could you can make up a thousand scenarios. And if you haven't already, leave a comment down below about a scenario that we might be able to work through in a similar fashion as what we did today. So just go into a cache. And maybe it's a, another cache uh, scenario that you're kind of interested in, but... If I had the option and availability, man, of course we'll uh, we'll get after it. Only 70 degrees, but man, I got we got some sweat on my back today. I'm gonna open up this box of MREs. This is an Alpha Alpha box, so we'll if you didn't already know, we'll do a quick inventory, and then uh, I'm gonna show you the best and easiest way to tear open into an MRE, and we're gonna stag them, chat it down, but we're gonna we're gonna take it to the shade. May not be much, but moving the shade is gonna shade you, you know, four or five degrees anyways. So let's uh, get this box open here. Of course, we just want to find our tabs. Pull from the back side, right? And I'll get her opened up. Yeah, keep getting this guy open here. All right. So what we have? Southwest style beef and black beans that's number 24 uh cheese toward leaning tomato sauce pork sausage patty maple flavored asian style beef strips creamy spinach fettuccine beef patty jalapeno pepper jack chicken burrito 16 beef ravioli tuna chunk mexican style chicken stew pizza slice number 23 and then hash brown potatoes at number 20. So out of these two, I think I'm gonna pick it down to Mexican style chicken stew and Southwest style beef and black beans. I think we're gonna go with, uh, I'm gonna show you both actually, because I'm gonna show you the best way to open up an MRE, right? Because in, most of the time, the way that we try to open them is we have, right? We have a peelable seal, but I mean, come on. Is it really? I'm trying. There we go. Now I got it out, right? But I'm gonna show you a better and faster way. So what you do is you take credit card, cat card, whatever, and just tear it right open. I mean, come on. It didn't get any easier than that. Boom. <laughs> come on. So this is the uh, Mexican style chicken stew. We got the chicken stew itself. Uh, Heater, cheese, pretzels, condiment packet, heater, uh, crackers, jalapeno spread, spoon, hazelnut, cocoa, mango, peach, applesauce, hell yeah, and then a uh, first strike chocolate bar. So this is a this is a pretty good uh, MRE. So when you're opening up your MREs, most of the time we like to follow these labels here, right? I mean it's the pull tabs, right? And so we want it we want to rip this way, but man, that's that's no bueno. So what you're gonna do instead is push everything down to the bottom. This way, you're gonna open across, right? Now, when you get in here with your spoon, you have all this room. You, the whole depth of the spoon is available, right? You're not you're not reaching down and getting your fingers all icky. So Mexican style chicken stew, as you can see. 
it obviously looks like chicken stew, right? <laughs> and it's just because we're eating it cold. Chicken stew finished up. We're going to put that away. Now I'm actually going to get into the condiments bag because I need a couple things out of here. The first thing I need and I'm going to keep is my toilet paper. Now, this John Wayne paper, they call it John Wayne paper because it's rough and tough and doesn't take shit off anybody. But I don't want this for my TP. I, I have baby wipes for that. What I'm going to use this thing for, excuse me, you don't get any of that. Fire start material, right? That, that's what we need that for. And I'm also after salt. Now, again, although it's only 70 degrees, I don't know how scientific this is. This is just something that I've always done. Pour your, some of the salt in here. I'm going to take the whole bag. You're losing a lot of salt. It just, it makes sense to me. Mango peach applesauce. Rip that open. Man, that's good. I'm putting everything right back into the bag, right? You can try the first strike bar. Oh, what the hell? Chocolate flavor. get fat eating this crap try the cheddar cheese pretzels I'm, i ain't eating all these things otherwise known as combos right combos are good jalapeno spread with cheese or as it's written cheese spread with jalapenos Dirty boy. <laughs> what is it? Come boy. And again, the last thing we got here is the chocolate hazelnut cocoa that we'll try out. Most awkward thing to try to. Right. Okay. Not bad. Overall, I'm gonna give this MRE a, an A plus, man. It's a good meal. Again, that's a chicken style, Mexican style chicken stew number 15 in the Alpha Alpha box. Maybe the best MRE in this box. Probably one of the better MREs that I've ever had. All right, so we got it all. Uh, Picked up, ready to pop smoke and, and get out of here. If you enjoyed the content of the video, make sure you like it and leave some comments down below, whether it's another scenario you want to see uh, that we walk, uh, do a rehearsal through, and or if there's another MRE that uh, you're curious about what's in it and what it tastes like and what, what top things of that thing. Hey man, I appreciate all you guys. You stay out there, you stay stoked.